And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a game that was very successfully kickstarted here, Con of Cons. I guess you're the, the King Con, or the... Well, I'm not sure what it is. You're a con in Prax, and you want to be declared the con of cons by stealing the most cows from a lot of other people. A glorious thing to aspire to. This is a game from Reiner Knizia, one of the most well-known designers in the world. Let's take a look. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to take their con that they want to be the con of the Rhino Riders or the Bolo Lizard people or what have you. Each of these cons has a special ability that you can use, which is listed on the back. And you'll put the con card in front of you. You're also going to get a certain number of corral tokens depending on the number of players in the game. On a player's turn, one player is going to go first. On a player's turn, you have four different actions that you can do. If you have a special ability on your con, you can use it as one of the four. But mostly what you're going to be doing is you're going to be raiding a location. You're going to pick a location, turn over the top card, and see what happens. Now, each of these locations has the same cards that are in it. Uh, you have cows here, 120, 250s, and a 100. When you raid these, you just put it in front of you, and it's going to be worth that many points at the end of the game. A Waha's Blessing, you can either immediately swap it with someone else's raid card, in which case, let's say I take your 100. When If you I steal that with the Waha's Blessing, then you'll stick that Waha's Blessing underneath your con card. At the end of the game, it's worth 20 points. I can keep it and use it on a future turn as a, one of the four different actions that I can choose, or I can just keep it for 20 points at the end of the game. Tribal Champion defends against enemy magic, which lets you discard a Tribal Champion card, or get rid of all the raid cards from your herd. If you draw this, all your raid cards go away, but this defends against it, so you want to put this in front of you, but if you ever get two Tribal Champions, they apparently kill each other. And Stampede, your highest raid card, goes away. And then in each deck, there's an extra card. In this case, it's another 50 cow, but every card has something specifically different in it. So if I go to Bold Home, for example, and I look at all the different cards that are in here, I'll say, what do they have two of? Well, it looks like they have two 100 cows in this particular deck. So you'll turn over the top card or do another action. I'd like to tell you that's pretty much it. You know, there's not much more. You can take one of these raid uh, corral tokens and turn it over at any point if you have a certain number of cows, any number of cows really, and then those cows are safe. Nothing can happen to them. They can't be raided or taken by other players or what have you. But you only have a certain number of these, so you have to know the best time to use them. When all the cards in all ten locations have been taken, then the game's over, and you're going to count up all the points that you have of all the different cards, the Waha's Blessings, the raid cards, and whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. So according to the rule book, this is set here in a world of Gorantha. I don't know anything about this world, but it's been used for computer games and such, and they even tell you about the past and about the tribes in the book. The rules themselves are pretty easy. In fact, they explain multiple rules multiple times. The artwork is fine. You know, it's this silliness, uh, almost a asterisk and obelix type artwork. It's the same artwork on every card, basically, but it is pretty easy to tell apart, and the cards are of decent quality. I especially, this is something I like. I mean, this is really just on the board. It just shows you where each of the different card stacks goes. Totally useless, and you could just put the 10 stacks out there, but it ties it together a little bit thematically. Uh, the special abilities being on the back here, that I found a little bit annoying. You know, the Rhino Riders, what do they do? Well, they do this, this, and this. I just thought it was kind of weird that that's on the back, so you have to keep flipping it over to use it. You could just leave this side face up, but then you don't have the artwork. Uh, but that's really the only thing I would say, problematically wise, everything fits in the box pretty easily. There you go. Con of Cons is essentially a push your luck, slightly take that game. 
I mean, that's really what it's going to be. It's uh, I'm going to turn over cards and hope I get something good and hope I don't bust by drawing two of this or drawing it makes my cows go away. And before I get too many cows, I need to corral them. This is nothing new, nothing unique, nothing different, nothing we haven't seen in any other game before. This is a re tread redone thing to death it's pretty much par for the course from uh, you know dr Kenizia these days this is the kind of game he designs it's a very pretty one there's a lot of cool pieces in it um it's just not that interesting overall however there is humor to it and i think a lot of people will enjoy it it's a light family game and people will have i mean you can get entertained by it. The special abilities of the cons help a little bit. You know, they make things a little bit different. So, for example, um, this, the Rhino Riders, you need two energy magic cards to get rid of your tribal champion. Shrewd gets an extra corral tile. That's not that exciting, but hey, you can do it. Um, one of them is uh, when you lose your things from a raid, then they go to, to you. So if someone else has uh, cows run away from them, they come to you. So there's some interesting ones in there, especially those as actions. So this adds a bit of depth to the game. So from an, you know, an inch of water to two inches of water, you're not going to need to swim at all. The game is just, you can remember, oh, I saw the 100 cow taken out of that pile. I won't go to that pile for a while. Great. You can memorize what comes from each pile, but it's still just kind of uh, turn a card over and see what's in that pile. And that's okay. You know, sometimes that's okay for families. They just want to get, sit there and have fun and not put a lot of thought into it. For me, it was amusing, but very, very briefly. I wouldn't want to play it more. Uh, I don't have any desire. I, I want to have a few more choices when I play a game, but it's a nice little package. This is one I could see in a mass market store and folks enjoying. And then um, I guess if you're a big fan of this world too, that's you know something that people are going to enjoy too. Uh, but without that background and without all that involved, it's just an okay game for me. That's kind of cons. Dice Sour Judgment, it's a amusing. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Weekly, a small intimate gathering for board game events. Join us for Dice Tower Brews, the largest board game brews. Attend the Dice Tower West in Las Vegas, or game fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando, in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.